Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day and it's time for newspaper review. And uh, well, today I don't have my papers. And so I'll go ahead and introduce my guest and go to my first story. Now in the studios, I have George Aisi. He's the communications director for NADMO. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah, good morning. How are you doing? Girl. I'm good by grace. Christmas, what's the plan? Uh -huh. <laughs> Party in your house so we can all come. I see you. Yeah. Uh, lawyers Loyal. also will arrange and have a party. Together. So you're having the party together? Yeah, joint party. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll turn that party into a debate over who is doing better than the other. But also I have lawyer Godwin Eduzi Tamaklo. He is on the NDC communications team as well. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bella. And, yeah. Uh, good morning to George and our cherished uh, viewers. Mm. Um, I think you are doing well. Thank you. Uh, a role predominantly played by male. You have mm -hmm. um, transitioned into it beautifully. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So this is where you add the dollars to it. Don't come and say <laughs> No, I mean, as for the dollars, it's, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll defer, I'll defer that to Auntie George to assist me, you know, discharge that responsibility. No problem at all. But thank you so much. Yes, I'm very yes, grateful. Yes, yes, yes. Let's start off with our first story. And this is a hit against the NPP. Now, according to some documents that have been presented to Parliament as part of budget estimates for the Office of Government Machinery, the President is said to have spent 62,578,224 Ghana cities on foreign travels and related expenses in the first nine months of 2019. Now, the breakdown of the expenditure indicates that the 62 million Ghana cities were spent on foreign trips, 5.8 million Ghana cities on hotel accommodation, that's local, and 1.9 million Ghana cities on refreshments along with other items as well. And there's actually a breakdown of exactly how much was spent for printed material, office facilities, telecommunications, maintenance, and so on and so forth. If there's time, I'll try and touch on them. Now, the ranking member on Parliament's Finance Committee, Kassil Atu Fawcett, says the extravagant expenditure cannot be justified. And he's asking Ghanaians to hold government more accountable because of some of these frivolous spendings that have been indicated. First of all, let me go to George and find <laughs> out, is this really true? Is that how much you have spent on travel alone in nine months in 2019? <laughs> uh, Bella, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to lawyer and good, good morning good. to our viewers. Uh, before I answer your question, let me uh, seek permission and announce to the public that on Sunday, the New Patriotic Party uh, family is having a national conference uh, at the Trade Fair Center in Accra. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after the conference, there'll be a rally in the afternoon at the forecourt of the Trade Fair Center. We entreat all to be there, including LDG lawyer, mm. uh, LDG Tamoklu, <laughs> yourself. You, you want him to be there? Yes, well. yeah, we are inviting <laughs> oh, no, you. Know, usually, <laughs> you know, usually for set programs, yes, fraternal, yes, yes, you yes. know, engagement. And I know yeah. who will be there. We'll definitely send yeah. you right there to yes. come and witness how you people will be spending <laughs> The taxpayers' the, money. Oh, no. That's it's, what the focus is about, right? It's our money. <laughs> it's our <laughs> money. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's not money. Yeah, that's not, not taxpayers', taxpayers, taxpayers. money. Yes, it's I mean, a I party mean, activity. I mean, <laughs> with this, this is a party that until they won power, they were indebted to Prudential Bank almost 2 million Ghana cities. Mm. So oh. if today, with the benefit of power, my brother George and co have so much. Oh no, what should we have a so program much. Yeah. at the fair? I can only Oh, even more. in opposition, yeah. we, we organize yes. the program at Having the Yes, having regards to your debt. But now, yeah. I think there's more in the kitty. <laughs> I see. Anyway, let's, well, let's say, we, touch on... We never yeah, used right. $20 million to build a headquarters anyway. But you spent $62 million on travel. Government machinery, right? Yeah. Office of government machinery. Uh, it's important. Look, uh, Bella, the facts of the matter uh, is, you know, I was trying, you know, when I got the thing, I was trying to get over the period, but I couldn't mm. succeed, you know, so we can do proper comparative analysis. Okay. Uh, but what be is as it may, we are talking of uh, the 62.5 uh, million. Government is moving, you know, any... At the presidency, we have about seven or so uh, ministries under the presidency, mm -hmm. right? Good. So all these ministries will be making 
their movement, travels and others. And you see, if, if you decide not to travel and you be at home thinking you can rule out every, there are certain things you need uh, international partnership and support and others you must go, statutory commitments, uh, UN, uh, AU and others. All these are part of the travel budgets that uh, you see that has been brought before Parliament. And so, uh, yes, you may say the figure is uh, 62 million is huge. Nine months from January, yeah, January to uh, September, September. Uh, close. We need to interrogate what are the travels? Are they beneficial to the state? Are they very important travels that must be, you know, uh, uh, attended to by the individual officers? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not only ministers, not the president alone, CEOs and others within those sectors are all parts of the budget that, you know, we are talking about. Okay. Get it. So uh, I would want to get the fine details of the travels and the importance of those travels to the states. Ghana, you get it. And what are some of the benefits there from? Okay, if, if the president travels or a minister goes outside and then there's some partnership engagement and then people are brought in, what happens? Okay, okay. Uh, the, the recent one, uh, I've forgotten the terminology, uh, the, the homecoming of the, the, year, the, year, of the year of return, you yeah. get it. The year of return has been uh, very successful, you know, and so before you get people coming, People must go there to get them engaged and then tell them the reason why, you know, it's good for you to come back to Africa and particularly Ghana uh, as part of our year of return uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. And so if you're able to do that and get them convinced and understand why they need to come, when they come, whatever engagement you have, uh, it will even ginger some of them to begin to invest in the economy, right? Okay. And so these are all very important and positive uh, travel engagements that I think, and, and for my of uh, property and accountability, uh, you need to have the records of all this and put it uh, before Parliament and the public. We do understand that, of course, you need to travel in order to bring business yeah. and other yeah. initiatives and all of that. Yeah. But we all do know that when a government official is traveling, it's not just one person and maybe a PA. Yeah. Sometimes they go with a whole entourage. Yeah. I have personally witnessed, um, you know, a government, uh, you know, person traveling with about 15 to 20 people at a time. There was a conference yeah. and all these people People came at the same time and the question that everybody was asking where are all these people going why are they all behind this particular person traveling can we not do these trips without having such a huge number of people going with them is that not why there seems to be a large amount being spent on travel I mean no, aside all, other things as well thank you that's a good observation but all these people have a role to play when they get there Okay, you know, yes, people. yes, you know, sometimes when the president goes for international visit at the UN or AU, whilst the other purpose for the travel is ongoing, along the sidelines, the wings, there are engagements with business people, right? Mm -hmm. Some members of the team engage, if, it, if it's tourism sector, they engage the relevant bodies there. If it's about the foreign direct investment sector, the investment people engage other people mm. on the wings of the main conference for which they've traveled there. So all these people, the moment they get there and then the president or the minister who is responsible, who is leading the team for that purpose, mm. then they begin to engage to woo people to come back home you get it With all tax, to bring their investment money? it's part no it's part of the engagement right it's part of that's why i'm, I'm not happy when i got that this day i was trying to get around that over a period so yeah. i can do proper comparative analysis and that will would rather enrich the conversation right well, and so they, they do have a list of details of chief of staff secretary of goods and services yes no, returns. yes those are all within the same uh, nine months of this well, that's government. a lot of money we're looking at here yeah yeah but of the Government running the office of government machinery uh, is not small, and I I remember uh, is it 2015 or 2016? Uh, office of the president exceeded his budget. You know, it has budgeted for about 1.9 billion, mm -hmm. and then it went media review. It went for addition to about 2.7 billion. Mm -hmm. By the time the year had ended, 2016, office of government business, as the presidency then had spent 6.01 billion. You get it. So you're saying what in your case? No, so then there are certain things that may come up. You've exceeded the budget. 
But this government, as of the figures I'm seeing, I don't think has uh, gone beyond the budget of proportion. Well, we don't have beds in our hospitals. Yes, there are yes. ambulances still oh, parked. There are a lot of issues. Oh, let me bring oh, lawyer. Let me bring lawyer. These things are there. The government machinery must run. Okay, but this government is doing those things figures. alongside. <laughs> Lawyer, let me bring we you in because wh why is the NDC acting shock? Especially because we do understand that when you were in power as well, you exceeded expenditure. And then again, was this budget not approved in Parliament by both the NPP and the NDC? I think it's important that we situate this conversation properly mm. so that we do not misinform okay. our viewers. First of all, the claim that the NDC or under the NDC six billion was what was over expended relative to government three machine billion. three billion yeah, but the total went from one point now you see it's percent. important that you situate that conversation well so that i clear this misinformation wow. mm -hmm. now ministries departments and agencies there are instances where they undertake projects that may not necessarily be budgeted for but they are projects that are immediately you need them immediately mm -hmm. and so if you do that it, it forms part of what you call the budget overrun but that does not mean that the presidency expended that amount of money mm -hmm. now what is important and what this discussion is about yeah. is that the leadership of the MPP led by Nanado Dankwe Kufado in opposition, promised that they were going to protect the public purse. Yeah, we are. And therefore, it was the basis on which the 53% voted for them. And so, where you make a definite promise, and in fact, if you look at the highly plagiarized inaugural <laughs> statement of the president, you know, one of the key matters that he raised is the fact that with the benefit of power now, he is going to protect the public purse yes, yeah. by one, ensuring that there will be value for money, yeah. which he had failed woefully, wow. and many other things. So when you make a definite campaign promise of protecting the public purse, it lies ill in your mouth to now justify your overruns with what happened in the past. And so at least let's respect the voters who voted for you. Okay. Now what is important is that Look, every year, there is what you call the budgetary allocation for the Office of Government Machinery. Yeah. Now, the first year, 2017, budget estimate for the Office of the President was already in billions. And that is the total sum of 2014, 2015, 2016 combined for the Jomahama administration, just for government machinery. And so where you have a situation where your one-year allocation alone, you know, exceeds the three-year yeah. run of the Muhammad administration, no. then it becomes worrying. No. Now, Is that really the case? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the benefit to respond. Six Look, alone. 2017, 2018, Maro Senior, Abu Jinnah was the one who represented the chief of staff before the Finance Committee of Parliament to justify the estimates. In 2017, the, the overall budgetary expenditure for presidential travel was 54 million Ghana cities. 54 million Ghana cities. Now, the expectation was that with the benefit of time, this expenditure, because you see, this is a new president. He's now going to establish contacts, diplomatic engagements, and what have you in his first year. So you want to give him the benefits. Then 2018, the figure went up. Then 2019, which we are in now, the, the, the chief of staff's office now had to come to parliament to justify the 2020 budget. And now they had to give you the report of what they have done so far. And so then they had to bring from January to uh, September 2019. And if you look at the figure, which I decided to, I yeah. mean, this, this is what came from the cabinet secretariat alone. Okay. And so from here I can, I can. Maybe let's take the, the microphone. Oh, sorry, sorry. giving us some feedback. Sorry. Yeah, all right. So if you look at the estimates, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, mm -hmm. and then the total, 
And then you have the details of the Chief of Staff Secretary, Goods and Services Expenditure. This is it. Yeah. And if you take your time and you go through the records, the figures, they are mind-boggling. Mm. I mean, you wonder what in God's name. For instance, you have something called Operational Enhancement Expenses. 68 million Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. And you are asking yourself, what in God's name do you mean when you say operational enhancement expenses? Well, George will tell us what that ex uh, means. And we are that. spending 68 million Ghana cities for that. Now, if you look at foreign travel costs and expenses, yeah. 62 uh, million, million. Yeah. Ghana cities. Yeah. Hotel accommodation alone, 5 million. Over nine months. Over nine months. And I understand our president, anytime he goes to London, he doesn't like going to Landmark Hotel. I mean, that, the price is a bit cheaper. Oh. The 3000 Would you pound, want him to go to Landmark? Is the security also not to be... Oh, no. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that at least in protecting the public purse... You wanted to go and the president, to Landmark. The, oh, no. They have some nice oh. presidential... I know. <laughs> they have some nice presidential <laughs> suits there. But the point I'm making is that if you can pay thousand pounds, three thousand pounds, it's better than going for ten thousand pounds. And so, if you look at the presidential hotel accommodation alone, from January to date, we are looking at five million Ghana cities. Mm. Now, refreshment, curious. And yeah, I mean, when you talk about refreshment, we are effectively talking about uh, tea, uh, you, know, you know, pastries, and what have you. That alone is costing the tax, or has cost the taxpayer 1.9 million Ghana cities. Mm. And you wonder if the Lord's Supper was what <laughs> you are engaged in. <laughs> That's not propaganda. <laughs> I mean, even the Lord's Supper could not cost this much. But even curious, you look at rental of office and res residential mm -hmm. accommodation, mm -hmm. 900,000 Ghana cities. Fuel and lubricants, 4.8 million Ghana cities. Mm. Printed materials and stationery, 1.6 million. Telecommunications, telephones and what have you, 1.8 million Ghana cities. And you see, my lady, this is just for the president. We are now going to the vice president. Mm -hmm. Now, vice president, maintenance, hotel accommodation, 2.5 million Ghana cities. Refreshment, 1.9 million Ghana cities. Operational enhancement expenses, 1.8 million. And so, if, if all this amount even relates to the entire presidency, what we say is even a better thing. This, and so overall, within this period from January to September, the government on Nanado Danko Kufado has spent 168 million Ghana cities in running his office alone. Has it not yielded results? What results? What results? My lady, what results? <laughs> what results? Do you know that, curiously, this same government claims that Part of the dividend for, what shall I say, this obnoxious expenditure is that the year of return has yielded some amount of money. Are you people serious? But if, if that's the case... No, it has, what has that got to do? Why? Can it be, was it an adult who bought a ticket for But Cardi B is not the only one I'm who just has saying, come down. But the other ones that have come, mm -hmm. why? Is it an adult who is buying their ticket for them? Not necessarily, but was he not the one who officially commissioned the idea commissioned of return? Commissioned what? That oh. one, ah, even the president could have just come to TV3. No, but it wow. wouldn't have made that kind no, of No, 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 but I'm saying that that is what has happened. Why? Was it globe trotting, saying year of return? The president spent significant time globe trotting around the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. What was he doing? What was he doing, Bella? Look, they are well, you think all look, his trips Look, there are critical issues that we need to examine. Look, no president under the fourth republic mm -hmm. has run his office at this cost to the what? taxpayer ever 
I just mentioned 2016. No, that's what I'm telling you. That when you talk about budget overrun, roads, hospitals, they are what you call the budget overrun. But it's still, it's still an overrun. So, no, but that one it has nothing to do with direct expenditure, consumption. But that's why he's saying that your that's what I'm talking about. Your budget overrun was what six? No, you are not getting it. I get what you mean, but then he's also insisting. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, this, this, this is what. This government prepared. This thing was prepared at the office of the president. Yes. Were you already not aware that this was this how much was probably spent? No. You see, that's what I'm saying. That this is the expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now they we are in for 2020 to justify why they need yes. more for you. Yes. And so they had to give you the actuals. Yes. And I'm saying that if you pick the actuals and the figures, one yes. at a go, it's it's scary. And you see. If you have a situation where the last time we were here, yeah. teachers were on strike, mm -hmm. yeah. and all they are asking for is in the region of, say, 49 it's, million. Yeah. No, about 80 million. Also, I, mean, I, I mean, say, no, even six, 80. Yeah. And then today, this morning, the teacher who is watching us, that young nurse who is watching us, comes to the conclusion that from January to September, Government office of the president alone, they have expended 168 million. And for his foreign travels, he spent 62 million. Mm -hmm. And you see, even one figure that I think we need to even further interrogate, and like you journalists, you do, is the operational enhancement expenses. George is going to explain <laughs> to us. He doesn't but know. are you saying that <laughs> and the teachers have not been paid and nurses have not been paid? The president cannot go on these trips because no, these no, are no, the. I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm asking. Just, yes, I agree. You but you see, the point. I'm, yeah, the point I'm making is that in terms of priority, you see, for stay. instance, you are the the mother of the house, and it turns out that the school fees are standing, gas we don't have, there is no light at home, and the kids get to know that mom travelled at this expense, at this cost. Obviously, you are not being responsible. Mm. And so, even in keeping a house, the first conversation that will come to the kids will be, Mommy or Daddy, how well are you managing the mega resource? It's even more curious when the president is the one saying that, Oh, my predecessor left me nothing. And yes, they are and, spending this And money. yes, this same man that you left nothing to him. Yeah. Is spending 168 million in running his office only. George, can you explain to us a few of these? <laughs> the operational uh, enhancement. Uh, I don't know, know the details. And reason why, and yes. I'm going back to this issue of no bed syndrome, which we've been talking about for yeah, years. Yeah, and we're working there are on a lot those of problems. Even we're working on ambulance. System. There are yes. not enough schools, enough dormitories. We're building a lot. Track. We are building a lot. We build over 804 dormitories, assembly halls, classroom blocks, and co it's still not enough. Concurrently, it's going on concurrently. Hospitals that are shut down because yes. of lack of operational facilities, some of them say, um, you know, a lot of issues, and we're spending this much on trips. So, would we rather a government machinery grinds to a halt? That is the fulcrum, that is the pivot around which all other sectors revolve and are able to operationalize, right? When the president is moving, we know this president is the type that is not an armchair president sitting in the office. He goes through everywhere in the country, particularly. Now, when the president is going to move, there's an advanced team all the time. Mm. Okay? We have somebody who is a director of operations at the presidency. What does he do? Okay? He's got a responsibility. And part of that responsibility is getting advanced teams to prepare and make sure where the president is going at any time T is secured and well protected. Okay, then the national security and will we'll also uh, play their part. The 30 plus people. Good. You get mm -hmm. it. So, you know, the, the president is the number one gentleman of the land, right? And so his security is paramount to all of us. All of us. Okay, that's mm -hmm. how come we do that. And, and if these advanced teams are going, preparing and all that, you think it's not going to come with a cost? It definitely will come with a cost. What are we uh, getting Bella, from it? Come on. That's what the... This is a government that has rolled out a lot of programs. A lot that are benefiting the individual. Like? 
Oh, of course, we just spoke about school issues. Yes. Free SHS definitely I cannot speak without mentioning it. Planting for food and jobs. What is the impact that is making in the farming community? Okay, the cocoa sector. We are doing a lot of work in the cocoa sector. A lot of some of the cocoa trees are diseased. You need to cut them, replant, and then get the farmers something to be able to, you know, get them sustained before those things. You get it. I'm telling you, the record we had sometime, I think 2016 or there about, the Sashi area produced over 330,000 metric tons. It's the highest cocoa growing area. Okay, one, two years down the line because of the disease trees, which my brother and the, uh, his government didn't do much about. Mm -hmm. Sashi area is producing 145,000. It's being compensated for by the East East Volta region and co because we're doing, you know, uh, hand pollination and others that are improving on the pro produce there you get it. so these are deliberate programs that this government is rolling out to benefit uh, the people right so i'm happy and again you ask the right question lawyer knows it budget is presented to parliament okay office of government machinery this is how much is going to be spent on and we know almost every day in this country people move to one place or the other okay in the name of the government of ghana and you must go to get certain things put in place for the benefit of the people. Okay? okay? We have international partners who come to support our health sector, right? As we speak, you know, we've sent some people, uh, nurses, nurses and medical yes. people going outside mm -hmm. to help. Nas even national service. People are going outside to do national. There's that arrangement people and are going agreement. outside to do national, national service. National service. Some people. Countries. Yes. They requested those things, okay? And so there's so that partnership. Them for that? Uh, no, of course. If, if, if you have that international bilateral agreement, that country requested for it. Okay. So when the president Yes. When the president went to Barbados, right? There was a request from the president there or the prime minister that they needed Ghanaian nurses. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that arrangement has been established and a team is being sent there. You get it. So people must go to make these arrangements to help. I have before, you know, now I've been, always been saying, why can't we as Ghana train nurses and export them? Cuba is training doctors and exporting We don't even them. have enough of them in the country. No, no, no. no. And teachers. South Africa at a point in time needed teachers a lot. And Ghanaian teachers were migrating to that place, right? Because conditions were probably better. Good. So I'm saying then why can't we deliberately or consciously make the effort to train some teachers and export them? Okay? As a policy. So these are matters that are ongoing. And this government is ruled out a lot of otherwise, you know, programs that were not in existence. NAPCO is another key one, which has helped over 100,000 young people who otherwise would have been on the street. They and so complain. this, and you remember when the president spoke, uh, the, 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 your, your, your sister, Sir Rami, mm -hmm. here asked uh, if it's justifiable to still have the 100 plus yeah, uh, minister. minister. And the president, mm -hmm. yes, said yes. yes. Otherwise, the, the benefit therefrom in the governance structure, in all other sectors, maybe we wouldn't have, you know, chalked them, but for the numbers. Yesterday. Okay. So we need that. that. Bella, you know, we need that. Bella. No, no, so, no, 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 just one day. <laughs> no, let me just say that the only quickly. minister that has performed incredibly is the roads and highways minister, just for the fact that he went to stop that construction. And so they don't think <laughs> you that your ministers you see, are even you see, performing. You see, yeah, they are performing. Seriously. Bella. Yes. Let us no, not use see. this platform to celebrate mediocrity. Whoa, which mediocrity is? Let us not use this platform. I'm surprised. My brother here is justifying the elephant size administration. Look, under John Dramani Mahama, he had a minister of transport with one deputy, Joyce Bauer. Mm -hmm. They were able to do Terminal 3. Oh, come yes, on. Yes, I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> they were able to initiate the process for the construction of the first railway line from Tema to Akosombo. It's never happened. The expansion of the Tamale International Airport. They were able to do the expansion of the runway in Kumasi, a minister deputy. Today, we have a separate minister for aviation. million for... We have a separate minister for aviation. Kumasi. A separate minister for railway. A, a separate marvelous. minister for transport. What you do don't think they are doing well? What have they done? What? Let my brother... The railway sector... Let's you be know a team. Done well. Serious. The railway sector. You know, you know, know, you know what is going on? Mm -hmm. Minister Kofiada, what has he done? I'm asking you that. You Nothing. are the one saying he's not Nothing. done it. Wow. <laughs> Nothing. No, show me. My brother here can tell me that under Kufiada, he had reformed Ghana Airport. He had done Oh, no, you started some protests. Not some protests. Nothing. 
You know that the please, understand that there's a direct please, flight now to uh, war. Right? But the airport it's expansion was not done by you. No, 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 no. You have not completed it. You have not completed it. We came and completed it. You get it. So you think so, if you are sleeping, uh, you see, I'm justified that? enough. Okay, so this is a matter of eight years. Okay, <laughs> and the dividend therefrom is what we you saw see, there. Mediocrity so, then under so, President so Mahama. Three. So we had three different Daniels ministers. had to ask him to go. One transport. Minister. Sorry. Uh -huh. Transport minister. I'm not finished. Uh, Aviation minister. Coming, Aviation right. minister and railway. Three. three. You've mentioned these three. Yeah. You're saying they're they not they are performing. Nothing. Which, which you also one? have a separate minister for roads. Yes. Roads and highways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you pointed out, the, his very verifiable achievement was, you know, the outburst oh, come with on. the Turkish. Come That's on. all? Come on. No, tell me. The debts you left tell on me. the road well, sector. I mean, He's worked so hard on do, it. Do you know something? No, no, debt from 2013. Do you know the road? You get it? Do you it's know the it's road serious. I don't, even want, I don't even want you to well, do that. Well, you don't think <laughs> that they've done well because, with the Eastern uh, Corridor? Don't worry. Ghanaians will judge. Finally pay the contractors. Ghanaians will judge us. Don't worry. This road minister, together with Kokobo, when he became the road minister, the first thing that he did was to say that over 200 cocoa road projects should be stopped. Because they in said the name of the you had, had audit. In the name Even of contract, a clinical normal way, practice. More than, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the audit report? It cost the taxpayer 10 million Ghana cities to do that audit. There is no report. Huh. In fact, there Alhaji. There is no report. Alhaji. <laughs> Alhaji. <laughs> okay. Alhaji? I don't want to. Uh, he knows himself. Oh. He checked the committee <laughs> that audited the cocoa rules. It cost the taxpayer 10 million Ghana cities. You are speaking Have to Have you Ghanaians. seen the report? Yes. So you just do you know that this Allergy. minister Mwako, hold on, hold on. This <laughs> minister Mwako actually went to Jasekai. At that time, the Muhammad administration had awarded the road from Jasekai to Hoho. Stop, 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 stop. The contractor that was on that project is Rolida. Because Rolida had just finished the Fume Bame road mm -hmm. and had to now start. By November, they had finished all the ends and about doing the, uh, you know, oh, as far it was for then campaign. this administration <laughs> came and stopped the project. There was no money for there, that. Last there year, was no money. There was no money. Hold on. Last he year, Minister Mwakwata and the president went to Jasekai as part of his talk. When they got there, <laughs> Minister Mwakwata told President Nanado Dankwe Kufado that they had done with the audit, they found no wrongdoing against Rolida. And that within two weeks, I'll send you the Is video. Is that not why they... I'll send you the mm -hmm. video. Two weeks, the contractor will get back on site. We are in 20... The contractor is not back? Where? Look, there are serious oh, the issues current, in this The current Sino Hydro project, uh -huh. the Jasekai, so now, this thing, is, is part is, of it. It's part of it's the Sino Hydro project. <laughs> okay, this, I school the Jasekai. So that means that they are I going to resume... I know the place. I know the place. So they're going to resume... Uh, of course. It's part of that. And do you know, do you know what? Lady. No, after the eight years, years time they were in power. Let me tell mm -hmm. you what after they were doing. After three years. Eastern Corridor. Let me tell you something. Eastern Corridor. Tell me about the Eastern Corridor It starts from Tema. It starts from Tema. All the way... To the north. To Nkwanta, to Bimbila, all the way to the north, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what they did? Sometimes when you're traveling on the Eastern Corridor, about five kilometers will be done, and then the next 48 kilometers, nothing. Mm -hmm. Then you see another about two kilometers done, and then, so what's, what is actually going on? Piecemeal. Some of the things I heard eh, is that if Edwiji Tamaklu, influential in the NDC, eh, he has a stretch between maybe Jessica and Nkwanta. And because he's influential, a part of that, you know, will be awarded and be done. Mm. You get it. So that was it. And you don't see solid, concrete work being done tackling the Eastern Corridor from the beginning to the end. Think, if you are awarding contracts, if you are awarding contracts, you, you know and you remember area. the Asikuma, the Asikuma <laughs> you, you know, you know, to Peki area. As speak, it has been done. You know, so. it has been done. To a lot, has been done. a lot has not he been done. That's knows. part he, of it. He, he knew, also okay, five kilometers, he knew, he knew. Kilometers. You know very well that the contractor okay. was there from was the road. No, 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 it's for election purposes. That was what they were doing. You think it was for election purposes? Well, let him land. What was the contractor? He doesn't allow me to land. First car, first car. They were on the road, <laughs> right from Peki, Pebe, yeah. Have, yeah. through Nyangbo, yeah. right to Golokwati. Yeah. You guys came and stopped the project. What were they one. doing? That's just one. <laughs> the dualization Why of the road. Why did they stop the project? Yeah, I'm coming. That okay. They want to do an audit. 
the dualization of the road from, from, from Sokol Day to Ho, mm. you came, the Chinese were even doing the work. You came and stopped it three years. You've not they were not to committed come back. to do it. Three. They were not. Now, if you pick the road from Enquanta yeah, to Brewerniase, mm -hmm. right to the Dupepe Zoo, yeah. it had been done. Yeah. One of the best. Can but it says that you awarded contracts for 13 or what? 3.5 billion. And I'm saying from, you know very well that from Damanko to Bimbila, that portion had also been done. One stretch. Do you know what we did? What? In road, because it's a very long stretch, yeah. we gave it in lots. Yes. With different funding sources. So the initial funding source that. from Tema, mm -hmm. right to Asikuma to Ohoi, was supposed to come from the CDB loan. You knew it. Yes. Then the CDB loan, after they gave us the money for the gas infrastructure, they started pulling their feet. So you needed to now repackage it and look for new funding sources. Now we got the European Union to fund the, uh, you know, the road from, right from Enquanta Secondary School Junction to Dodi Pepesu. It has been done, first class road. Then we got the Brazilians to fund the road from Damanko right to the northern part of Ghana, mm -hmm. through Passa, Damanko, and then you go. It was a Brazilian facility. The government of Brazil at that time, led by the woman president, mm -hmm. was impeached or so. And so that particular funding source also. So we had to now go and look for different funds. And you know it. And it lasted so eight you years. You know it. Eight, 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 eight years. We were there. We still covered it. That is why government of Ghana <laughs> now decided to put those roads under the Coco Roads Improvement Plan. Good. Period. You, you and, now, and that was even worse. worse. <laughs> when the Kupa administration came, they said, look, the Do you know what? Well, let me corruption. tell you something now about the Coco Road. Let me tell you what. Yes. Now, now, let me tell you about the Coco Road. In 2020, how many of these roads can you? Oh, no, we've, yes. we've given them. We've, give, we've allotted about 9.5 billion uh, Ghana CDs for the Coco roads. sector. And then they are accusing me. No, no, no. 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 Do you know? No, no. 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 We just came. When we came, We needed to, you know, sanitize that sector. Can you? For instance, you know, you know, you know. No, no. Let's think. Coco Road. Yes, they I'm don't coming. have it. Well, I'm coming. Because they don't know No, Hold on. no, no. Do you let know let the cocoa rules, eh? Yeah. I have said it here. I'll repeat it. President Mahama did something. When we go for the syndicated load, he decided he was going to commit $150 million each year from 2014 to 2016 mm -hmm. for cocoa. Fantastic idea. I suppose when I heard that, I was happy. You know what happened? They, they were able to raise that 150 for three years, eh? incorporated it in the 2016 budget, which at the exchange rate that time, $450 million translated to about $1.6 billion was incorporated in the budget. They awarded cocoa roots in excess of $5.16 billion. Okay? $5.16 billion. Mobilization, whatever, serious. And, and do you know what? On records, on records, between the, when they lost election on the 9th of December, eh, and then by the time they handed over, over $400 million of the syndicated loan which they had gone for, had all been this best. To Mobilization. Yes, what issue? Oh, come, they'll take this. Come, take so you why get did it. You then are the main. No, so long. no, we needed to audit it and ensure. But once it's mobilization. No, no. no. Ah, but, but, but let me tell you, know, so you know the gang of four. No, let me, let me. Okay. The gang of four, eh, when we were leaving office, President Kufos, listen, the Archimota, I think this one was part and all mm. that. When they came, it took two and a half years or more. Nothing was being done. You remember President Mill said any time he drove on the Peace FM stretch, he had to bow his head. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because Ghanaians were complaining, dusty and all that. It's been because they said they were auditing. No. They need no. that time. They no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, School projects. You know, that was when they came, Professor Mills. The fourth year was about to roll <laughs> in, right? And they said they were halting all school projects. Okay? Development. We knew that President Kufo had given works to be done for expansion so that the fourth year there will not be challenges. He halted it for almost one and a half. Is that why you also came and no, halted no, no, no. the uh, development? I'm saying it's normally part of the reason to understand 
the extent of project, the extent of contract, and then the cost involved, whether it's appropriate okay. and others. You get it. Let, yeah. Then, once Bella. you are convinced, Bella. then you know, my, my, you certify my, it my, and move on. Let lawyers speak on this. So, these are matters that, but I still call it all they failed woefully. Woefully. But you also we are working on it. Yes. I've given you 2013 to 2016 road contracts. We were paying. 2019. Yes, we are paying. That's why. Anyway, in one breath, in one breath, our president says that. John Muhammad didn't do anything about roads. But oh. in another breath, they claim that oh, they have paid never hold of place. Ah, our president, even oh, the last no, no. media encounter. You're not enough. Said, oh, please, you said the whole dog, dog, <laughs> dog, <laughs> Our president, the, the last media encounter said, yes, look, I'm whenever he go, the chiefs and whatever. Yes. And so, and it was fine. his predecessors claimed that he built and constructed oh. roads cannot be true. Curiously, this same president who claims nothing has been done, now claims that he had paid contractors for work that they have done. Yeah. If those works were not done, on what basis are you paying those IPCs? And At least, I, I don't know who briefs our president on some of them. Uh, he is on but oh, he apps, he but he's been factual. Please. You know what we audited the rules? 11.2 billion. Uh, we we, we, we can't say 5.7. 5.7 was not only 5. There was still about what? 5.5. You know the gang of 4. 5.5. Mr. Was Kufour, certified. Mr. We'll wrap up on this. Mr. Kufo yeah. started. Oh, the other. I know. I wish we had talked about the one. Mr. Kufo started those. Programs. One B One F is Interestingly important. enough, the gang of four, they were GOG funded. Yes. And so when we came, yeah, and we noticed that they were GOG funded, there were no budget line for it. Mm -hmm. We had to now go look for money to do that. Yes. And to the glory of oh, God, we have fixed those rules. We're looking for money. Unlike you, three years down the line. Road projects that were ongoing, you stopped it. And you know for roads. <laughs> what did you fix that? Let him land. Let him land. So if you stop the road projects, by the time you start again, it would have deteriorated. And so it is going to cause the taxpayer more to do the very thing. And so if you look, even the, 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 the Jessica Ho Hoi, mm -hmm. the one that Rolida was on, yeah. that you mm -hmm. stopped. It's not yeah. causing the they taxpayer more than it ever happened. They were cutting the sides. They happened. were cutting they the were sides. Cutting and you see, for election you purposes. See, you see, I have been I there to, many times. Okay, let him land on this. We have draw, just two minutes uh, to go. Yes, yes. So I want to draw your as recent as when we went for Honorable Amewu's sisters this day. You know, the Eastern Corridor. So bad. Let me draw your attention. We have to go through Pando and then go back. The Zongo Development Minister appeared before Parliament to justify his estimate mm -hmm. for 2020. Yeah. 2019, government said they were going to give that ministry 109 million Ghana cities and budgeted that for KPES, that is capital expenditure, yeah. they needed 45 million Ghana cities for okay. capital expenditure. Do you know that as we speak, only 7 million had been allocated for capital expenditure. Meanwhile, government of Ghana had found close to, out of a uh, budget of uh, 70 million mm. for office of the president, they have given them 52 million so far. Okay. Ah, but we'll land on this. The we'll, we'll land is on always so moving. So I am saying that in terms of the priority, in terms of the priority, we will release the previous years. We will release the previous years. We need all that information. We will release all. And then you see, 2016, 6 billion. Speaking to John AEC, he's the communications director for NADMO and also lawyer Godwin Eduzi Tamaklo from the NDC communications team. When you have time, Go and take a look at the statements released by the Ministry of Trade concerning the 1B1F explaining which, uh, you know, what exactly it is that they said they were going to do under the one district, one factory and how far they have gone with that. New Day still continues. We'll be back with more.